Brass Roots 24-7. Butte County, you know, San Luis Obispo, wherever you are, every day, you guys are out there hustling. I shouldn't have opened the door. I'll be around with it. It's only 58 counties. And, and, and you know, you can't say thank you enough. You know, I've had the privilege of the course of the last uh, couple months to see a lot of you because we've been out and about. <laughs> That said, I also know I haven't been everywhere, uh, and you've made sure to make that point. Uh, but we just finished, you know, over the course of the weekend, uh, we had nine town halls uh, over a two and a half day period. Uh, we ended here in San Diego. Uh, we have been all over the state, uh, and we've been doing real town halls. Uh, we had a town hall in South LA that wasn't even a town hall, it was more like a picnic uh, outside. And what's so wonderful about it is that I am a very different person because of that process. I'm a different person because I have a different sense of what matters, uh, what's driving you, what you're hearing about, what concerns you, what concerns folks that you're out there representing uh, and working hard on behalf of. And I, I think that's, that's what this campaign should be about. That's what campaigns are about. And I just, I wanna just express to you uh, that I, I recognize how hard and lonely your work often is. Uh, and how often it is that folks up in Sacramento, you just wonder if they're paying any attention or even have a sense of the, you know, the gravity of the work that you're doing. And, and I'm, I'm just getting a sense of that. And, and I just want you to know that you matter and more and more of us care. Uh, and I hope that as a party, I hope as a party, we build on your work. Because we all we talk a good game about bottom up, but you know, it's you vote and guys like me decide that, that ain't bottom up, that's top down. Uh, and the key is to continue this two-way conversation uh, over the course, not just of a campaign, but after the campaign is over. And so I recognize that uh, and I respect uh, that and I've heard that from each and every one of you. Uh, second thing, um, and I, I don't have 10 things, so don't fret. Um, the second thing, and you've heard me say this before, but I really, it can't be said enough. There's this whole notion that, you know, the future is somehow some, it's a, a gift or something. That, well, the future is definitely women. Uh, <laughs> Trust me, I get that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, this whole notion of the future, you, you, we talk about the future all the time. But at the end of the day, the future is not a gift. It's an achievement. You gotta manifest it, right? Future is not just in front of you, it's inside of you. You've gotta make it so, right? It's decisions, not conditions, that determine our fate and future. And I, I just wanna remind folks of that, because. That goes deep into the zeitgeist, I think, of this moment, particularly vis-a-vis -vis the headwinds coming out of Washington, D.C., is people are looking to our leadership, not just our resistance, as powerful and potent as that is, because, look, we punch above our weight, and we're larger than 163 nations in population, and larger than all but five nations in terms of our economic output. So when you say you punch above your weight, look out, look out. But it's not just pushing back, it's also building up an agenda that's a positive alternative agenda. And that's where it comes, the front, that becomes then the framework of my point. Leadership. Leadership matters more than ever. Circling back, connecting the point, and ending this. But leadership also can be found everywhere and anywhere. It is not about the guy or gal on the white horse that's going to come save the day. You guys have been disappointed more often than not with that. <laughs> Leadership can be found anywhere. And our job as leaders of the Democratic Party is to amplify that leadership at the local level. To remind folks, to remind folks that they have agency. They're not bystanders in the world. We can shape the future. And I think this is the most important lesson and the most important expression for our children, for the young folks, they need to feel empowered. 
And we need to remind them you don't need to be something to do something. You don't need a fancy title. You don't need to become city council member or mayor or city administrator, board of supervisors, senate, lieutenant governor, governor. You don't need to be that. You have the capacity to do great things. And you've heard me say this, I'll repeat it. We are not celebrating this year the 50th anniversary of the loss of former President Martin Luther King. He never served a day in elected office. Most, one of the most transformational leaders of our time. You think about Nelson Mandela, you don't think about his four years, one term as president of South Africa. You think about his leadership and the liberation and what he represented 27 years at Robben Island. When you think about Gandhi, you don't think about a former prime minister. He never had any interest. He said about government, dare I say this as someone who's in it, he said, why would I ever get an elected office? That would, he said, degenius me. <laughs> right? Even Havel, which ages me, who was part of that velvet revolution in Czechoslovakia, who became a two-term president, he wrote a play called The Power of the Powerless and talked about the constraints of office. You think about the most transformational leaders, and I haven't brought up former Governor Cesar Chavez. <laughs> I mean, Cesar Chavez, right? You think about these leaders, you know? There was no Rosa Parks. If there was an Ida B. Wells. Leaders, they stepped up, stepped in, they exercised their voice. They all had one thing in common, one thing our president of the United States does not have in common. And that is, they all exercise their moral authority. Yeah. And we all have that capacity. It, it's a truism. You know, people in positions of formal authority, the more you use your formal authority, the less you have of it. The more you use your moral voice, the more abundant that voice becomes. So our key is not just to amplify leadership, but also better behavior and talk in those terms because that's what's at stake today. And those are the values we hold dear as Democrats, particularly here in California. The world is looking to us, not just for our ability to live together and advance and prosper together, but looking for us for inspiration and aspiration. And so I just want you to know our cause is near and dear to me, and I know to each and every one of you, but it is a cause. California is a movement. California. Right? We're not going to succeed, succeed, okay? This country needs us. We're going to have their back. And I just want you to know I've got yours, and I just want to, again, thank you for having mine. I, not, not every one of you is with me in this governor's race. I respect that. But I also want to respect our differences and try to unite this party. This party matters more than ever today as a united Democratic Party. Thank you all, Democrats.